dodge bullets, baby. Ah! This is beyond fairy tale. It's inconceivable. Six thousand three hundred fifty-eight began. One hundred twelve remain in the two thousand seven main event. Among them, Umberto Brennis, part man, part shark, one of poker's most polarizing figures. Now meet Khan. Tonight, Umberto Brennis and Havad Khan collide at the same table. Get him! What happens when an irrepressible force meets an irreverent object? We're about to find out. Bulldozer! Welcome to the World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Life. With Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. It is day five of the main event. We're down to only 13 tables here in the Rio Poker Room. All eyes on the pros, including the two remaining former world champs, both hoping to reach this year's main event final table. Not good, baby. I'm here. But when it comes to interesting twosomes, look no further than our feature table. 56-year-old Umberto Brennis has been a prime-time performer at the main event for the last 20 years. And Havad Khan, 22 years old, in just his second main event, has announced his presence quite loudly. Umberto. 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 Berto. Havad. He-Man. Bertoski. Conster. Berton. Berto. Let's go, Berto. It's just starting, man. I'm getting fueled up. He wakes up fueled up. Wait, man. And my Red Bull. Berto! Let's go! To continue their runs in this main event, Berto and Havad will have to contend with the chip leader, Dog Martin Mickelson, who's been letting his chips and cards do the talking. We look at our E Trade financial chip count, you see that Dog Martin with a million more than second place. Alex Kravchenko, the first Russian to win a bracelet here at the World Series in sixth. Havad Khan in seventh. Paul Spitzberg right now in ninth place. They're all chasing the eight and a quarter million dollar first prize. On the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam, Umberto with Ace-10 offsuit. And he will give it up. Over to our chip leader, Dog Martin Mickelson, Ace King of Diamonds. That's good for a raise to 60,000, three times the big blind. Chris Lovelace from Brandon, Mississippi. Now Ray Ray. And a re-raise with pocket eights. Come on, feed. Lovelace bought in for the $10,000 entry fee. Says, I wanted to know if I could play with the big boys. So far, so good. Over to Havad Khan now. That's a big boy. Yeah. And the big boys' cards go into the muck, and action is folded back around to Dog Martin. And he'll re-raise them all in. Okay. And a call. Okay. It's one of the most sedate all-in calls we've ever seen at the main event. <laughs> well, Lovelace has run up against the biggest boy, the chip leader. All right, to the flop we go now. The flop is 10-jack. Jack, what a flop for Mickelson, a straight flush draw. What a way to miss and still be monstrously ahead. <laughs> Lovelace's pocket eights are good, but in dire straits. 10. Turn card, six of diamonds and a flush for Mickelson, but not over yet, boys. Yeah, Lovelace can still survive with an eight or a jack for a full house. River card, queen of diamonds and a royal flush for Mickelson. Oh, Lovelace is gone. What a hell of a way to go out. Enjoy it, fella. I like it. Our ear drums are fortunate. Havad or Umberto wasn't the one to hit that royal flush. Mickelson over four million. This game is easy. Royal flush. Lord. Quite a statement by our chip leader, knocking off a player, hitting the Royal Flush, and even the World Series veteran Umberto Brennis is impressed. Norman, the daunting task of navigating through these huge main event fields seems not to have phased season pro Umberto Brennis. He finished 36 last year and has nearly cracked the top 100 this year. But when it comes to wild antics, Umberto may have met his match in Havad Khan. Well, in Umberto's defense, at least he showed us he could play a lick before he brought us his shtick. He's got two bracelets. On the other hand, Havad Khan's bark came before his bite, and boy does he bark loud. Today, we'll see who can play, and along the way, may the poker gods take mercy on us all. It all began with the nifty card protector on the right, which Umberto has grown into a vaudeville act. 
And there is his wife, Patricia, watching on nearby. And she's into the act, too, Norman. She uses those sharks when Umberto comes home late. Lucky charms can be found all around this Rio poker room. Take, for example, at the outer table, a little lucky Tabasco card protector of orange carp. Everything plays with this. That's good for the Tabasco hot hand of the day. I hope I get one. I love Tabasco and chips. Many players bring family photos for good luck. That family belongs to Jerry Yang. He kisses them whenever he needs help. I kiss my family photo anytime I go to the post office on a Friday. And the cheat sheet of Paulo Larrero at an outer table. And he's using it right now. He's in a hand along with Paul Spitzberg. Paul flopped a set of sixes and called Philip Helms all in. Philip on a flush draw. Larrero would need a million chips to call. I fold. And he's going to fold and pocket aces into the muck. Right, that's a pretty good cheat sheet. All right, so it's down to Philip Hilm all in on the draw. Spitzberg yes. barely has him covered, leading with the three sixes. Spitzberg nearly a three to one favorite to knock out the 31 year old poker pro. All right, Hilm all in. Here's the turn card. Spitzberg has been running pretty good lately. And it's a five of hearts. Hilm hits his flush. Close for that being over. Helm's not home free yet on this hand. If the board pairs, Spitzberg would still knock him out. The river card, a jack of spades, and Helm does survive to double up. A huge pot for Helm and a crippling one for Spitzberg. Philip Helm now with almost three million chips here in the main event. Did you really? I did. Just 100,000. Yeah, he started the day in ninth place, now running on fumes. That's the way life goes, gentlemen. They all have to take a stand. Paul came up short there. Elsewhere, Scotty Wynn, River to set of Queens, bet 300000 That queen also gave top two pair to his opponent, Corey Carroll, who raised. How much you got left? 350 Carroll has Scotty covered. I'm not calling you, all right? I just count my money. He'll need 450000 more to call. You have that hand, baby? I got 100000 thousand left. This would be for most of Scotty's chips. All right, call. And Scotty oh. will make the call, and he'll see that he has won the pot. Oops, sorry, baby. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, nice one. Right. Boy, you can't be any luckier on the river. Scotty hits a one outer against Carroll. Thought oh, you slow play with my uh, one with uh, aces back there, baby. Carroll down to just three hundred fifty thousand. Make sure I got some bullet left. What's that old saying? It's better to be Scotty than not to be. <laughs> the Prince of Poker still in the hunt for second world championship. The 2007 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Your best bet for great taste. Miller Brewing Company and in part by Degree Men. More power than you need, one day you'll need it. And Harris Entertainment. We register for next year's World Series of Poker now at worldseriesofpoker.com. The World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. No woman has ever won the main event. Hey, good luck, everyone. In 1998, Susie Isaacs came close, finishing 10th. In 2000, Annie Duke also finished 10th, only she was eight months pregnant. But the woman who has come closest to winning it all, Barbara Enright, finished 5th in 1995, making her the only woman to make the championship final table. Just two women are left in this main event. One of them, Kelly Jo McLaughlin, a 911 dispatcher in Pasadena, California. Her father, James McLaughlin, no stranger to the World Series. He pitched in the 1970 and 72 World Series of baseball for the Cincinnati Reds. The only other woman in the field, Maria Ho. But Maria will sit this one out. Her table mate, Jerry Yang, better get those lucky family photos busy. He moved all in with ace three. His opponent, Jack Hahn, with pocket eights, has the lead. We're ready for the turn card. It's a two of clubs, a straight draw now for Jerry Yang. Yang all but out of here. He needs an ace or a four for a straight, or he's done. Straight. Yes! Oh my yes! Yes! Jerry hit the straight on the river to stave off elimination. Wow, better late than never with that lucky family photo, I guess. I hope that's not my family photo. <laughs> that would be no luck at all to him, I'm sure. The crown jewel of the poker year, the main event. Just over 100 players left. Let's get back to our feature table. Havad Khan. Uh oh. Janitor, feature table, and cocktail, new Red Bull. You know, when you're playing online and spill something, you can't call for a janitor. It's part of my plan. I want the whole Red Bull smell around me. So it's just like this giant, like, bull Red Bull dozer. <laughs> 
Roberto Brenna seems to be enjoying the Havad Rain Con show here. Well, Havad creates a swirl even when he's not in a hand. Jack seven for Havad, and he'll not play. Action now around to Umberto Brennis, and what a World Series record that this man has had, Norman, 49 caches at the World Series. And Lon, what a main event performer he has been. 14th in 1987, 4th in 1988, 26th in 1990, and now this is his fourth main event cache in the last eight years. Queen Jack suited. He's gonna limp in from the small blind for 10,000 more. Dog Martin Mickelson. Mickelson entered the main event just 11 days after his 21st birthday. Originally, he thought the main event was too expensive, but he entered. Here he is, the chip leader, guaranteed at least 58,000. A pair of queens for Umberto, and he checks. Umberto says at the main event, he plays very cautiously, particularly early on when he doesn't know any of his opponents. Mickelson, though, will bet 35,000 into Umberto. It's tough to bluff Umberto. Umberto answers with a call. Turn card, tray of clubs, pairs Mickelson, but he's still in trouble. Umberto checks it again. Umberto knows young online players tend to be aggressive. And here comes more of it, 85,000 this time. He had bet half the pot last time. Mickelson bets two thirds the size of the pot this time. Umberto, just a call again. Tough to get Umberto off his hand. An ace of clubs, and that hits neither, but Umberto with a check mark, and he checks a third time. You see how carefully Umberto is playing? He check called two straight times and then checks again. Mickelson checks right behind him. He is good. And Umberto shows the winning pair. No bluff to Umberto. It's a friendly game. You're my friend. You're hey, my rookie, you can't bluff the game. veteran. This is long day. Uh, I'm pleased to report Umberto is under wraps at the moment. For the chance. <laughs> Umberto was thumbs up to his wife and the two sharks. Well, you know, he's got the ball and chain with him, so maybe that's why he's behaving. <laughs> All right, from our featured table to nearby table number two, where the Great Dane is sitting, Gus Hansen, sitting with about 1.4 million chips after raking in a nice pot. Gus finished 10th at the Tournament of Champions last year. He won the Aussie Millions earlier this year, and he could use a shave. And he was the chip leader early in the main event. Elsewhere, Kirk Morrison, another strong pro. He's on the left and a hand against Robin Berggren on the river. Berggren, a 24-year-old student at the University of Saskatchewan. Morrison is a 35-year-old student of life. Kirk says, I'm going to put you all in. And Berggren says, not this time. And Kirk Morrison takes down another pot. Morrison's been playing very steady poker here at the main event. He started the day with about 1.4 million, and Kirk heading in the right direction. At another table, we find Scotty Wynn, who is in a hand with former chip leader Dario Minieri. Dario, you may recall, got enough player points online to earn a Porsche. Minieri doesn't even have a driver's license. Scotty has raised enough to put Dario all in. Now look, Scotty can play two tables at once. Minieri's been on a bumpy up and down adventure in this main event. This decision is for all his chips, and he gives it up. It's messing around, baby. What are you thinking, man? Show a three. Show a three, and you're my I don't have a three, baby. But Scotty's got 2.3 million chips. Dario now is down under a million. So Scotty wins, still looking good. We look at our Milwaukee's Best Light Tournament update with 108 players left. 13 of those players are World Series bracelet winners, and three of those are multiple Ooh. bracelet winners, including Umberto. He won his two bracelets in 1993. And Patricia with that, I've got to live with him look. I know it well. <laughs> Havad would love to make his first bracelet a main event bracelet. You know, we're running good today with Havad and Umberto, both on the quiet side. From Washington State, a full-time player, Rep Porter, 6'3". Hey. Just wow. a little raise. raise. He says raise it up. Just a little every raise. Day, every day. Yes, yeah, no nice. Well, that's a position play by Porter. 6'3 off, and he raises. His name is actually Ralph Come Earl Porter. So his initials get you to rep Porter. Well, Porter knew that he could pick up the blinds and annies if Umberto had any type of marginal hand. Ace jack of diamonds. That's not marginal. From the big blind. Umberto's going to make the call. Nice. I checked you check in the dark? Yeah, for you. All right, two to the flop. And the flop is seven, deuce, eight. Umberto still leads with ace high. Brennis checked in the dark. Porter bets 90,000. With nothing, but he knows Umberto plays premium cards, and Porter figures that flop missed Umberto. I checked for you. Okay. Umberto calls and checks again. And it's a queen. 
Misses both players. Ford has been unable to shake Umberto. Now a continuation of his continuation bet, 175,000 more. Taking a third stab of making Umberto a believer. Porter just with six high, Umberto just with ace high. And he does get Umberto off the hand. He outplays the main event master. Apparently you can bluff Umberto. First time I put in the list. <laughs> I'm on the list. Cut a little piece. That's a good time. So the mild-mannered Rep Porter with a super bluff, he was able to push the Wiley Shark off the better hand. Back inside the Rio, and indeed, Paul Spitzberg is saying his goodbyes. He had the time of his life. It ends too soon. On our KFC Snacker Cam, you see now the field is down to just a dozen tables. It was a seething metropolis, now a concentrated village of survivors. And at one of the tables, Maria Ho has a big decision. Alan Keating moved all in by his last 316,000. Earlier in this World Series, Keating cashed when he was just 21 years and three days old. Maria makes the call. All in, Mom. See, he's so young, he's got to tell his mom anytime he's all in. <laughs> he does have ace queen. He is ahead. Leading the king jack of Maria Ho. Here's the flop, and there's a king and a jack. Oh, a brutal flop for Keating. Keating hanging on. He does have a straight draw. That's his best shot to stick around. Turn card. Now Jack's full for Ho ends Alan Keating's main event. I, know. I need to save some more luck for later. No, you needed that luck now, or there might not be any later. <laughs> Women. Alan Keating wins almost $59,000. Not bad for the Michigan State student. All right, let's head back to the featured table, the matchup of Umberto Brennis and Havad Khan. Umberto! What happened, my friend? I was in sale in asylum. They let me out to play this. I thought I recognized Havad from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. We'll watch him for any length of time, and it's obvious Havad Khan takes poker very seriously. Both his persona and his poker game grew out of his passion for another type of game. I played a lot of video games ever since I was eight years old, and one of the first ones was Mortal Kombat 2, and there was a character named Rain, and it's a pretty sick name. The last name is Khan, so I was like, all right, well, Rain Khan. Ah! I played video games very competitively for like four or five years. I saw something in poker, and I just managed to convert all of my uh, skills that I gained into playing a lot of sit and goes, which is what I'm notoriously famous for, is that I can mega multi-table sit and goes online up to 43 at once. Nothing's changed. I still want that island. I know after all the sit and goes I've played in all the tournaments, I'm going to have to run really good to win it. There's a lot of killers out here, a lot of monsters, a lot of big names in the field. It feels exactly like a video game. It's not easy anymore. I'll do what I can. He was playing so many sit and goes on online poker sites, suspended his account. They thought he was a computer program. Pavad then provided video proof, and his account was reinstated. But we do have proof he's an actual human All being. All right, Umberto, you're a good guy. How about Umberto? You too. <laughs> Thank you. Remember this, the chart is only way, way, way down. <clears throat> These two guys were made for each other. Can you imagine them heads up for the title? Who I'd have to take a personal day. <laughs> Umberto with Ace Jack. And he signals raise. Hey, thumbs up to you, soldier. <laughs> when Umberto goes thumbs up from early position, he usually has something. 65,000 is the bet. Dog Martin, eight deuce of hearts. Dog sitting on his big stack today and trying to stay out of harm's way. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm going to do what you did. Oops. Oh, jeez. Umberto hey. teaching Havad tricks. That's bad news. Right, look at my hand. Khan, the big blind. Six tray. An easy fold for Rain Khan. Nice. And Umberto will take the blinds and addies. Show the bluff. Umberto no need bluff. A lucky man no need bluff. Remember, I won't play a long time, a long day. I play all the time, I'm no bluff. Every people try to bluff me. And Umberto only come. <laughs> Do you have enough money next year for subtitles? <laughs> you see this? I don't like sharks, I like tuna fish. Shark is Go back home. Hungry, hungry. <laughs> I slipped out of left field. 
these two guys here, you need a pretty large left field. <laughs> All right, let's go nearby, and we find 96 main event winner Huck Seed hooked up after the river card with Lee Childs. Huck with rags right now, and uh, he's doing one of those I'm the world champion, you better fold type bets. Half a million. But Childs knocked off former champ Chris Ferguson, so he's not afraid. Childs charged with climbing into Huck's mind and figuring out that puzzle. Good luck. And he makes the call. I have nothing. He figured right. Huck has been caught with his bluff showing, and Childs takes the pot. Oh, boy, why do I do this to myself? Huck has had a knack for poker for a long time. In his first World Series in 1990, at age 21, he made two final tables. But like us mortals, Norman, Huck Seed, the former champ, has to walk that one off. All right, let's get back to table number two, where Gus Hansen is currently residing. I wonder if he's listening to Godsmack. <laughs> All right, Ryan Elson at this table. And Elson? Starting to make me sad. Make oh, me sad. he wants to play, but he can't. Action folds around to Hanson. Ace deuce off suit from the small blind. Gus is going to raise it up to 62,000 to Jason Koshy. The CPA from Los Angeles. Koshy with ace king from the big blind. It'll cost him 42,000 more to call, and he will. So two aces, Koshi with top kicker has the lead. Here's our flop and two more aces and the queen. Well, that is trouble for Gus. Hansen with trip aces, but with a weak kicker, bet 72,000. Can I make it 150? And Koshi's gonna raise it up. And why shouldn't he? So Gus needs 78 more to call. Gus is going to push the action and raise it again. Boy, Gus in bad position here, but he figures his three aces are good. Can I make it 400? And that raise of 400 makes it 550 to play. Well, Gus is getting in deeper and deeper, and there may be no getting away from his ace. So, one, two, three, four, five, fifty. There's no cap and no limit, right? You got it. Gus wants to put Koshi all in. All right, I'm all in. You got it, you got it. No, I don't. I don't. I have an ace. Oh, you have ace king. Okay, I'm dead. If you're Gus, no. you immediately rewind the hand in your head and think, yeah, of course I was beat. I guess I should have just folded, but... Uh, I don't count on them always calling me with ace king and flopping three aces. Ugh. Jason's fiance Nina looking on nearby. Not too live, but I guess it can always come a pair, a queen or a deuce. You got star power, man, on your side. Gus could lose nearly a million chips on this pot. All right, now the turn card. Tray of clubs, Koshi still leads. If a queen or a tray comes on the river, it's a split pot. Gus can only knock Koshi out with a deuce. River is a nine, and Koshi takes the hand. You said he's engaged? He is engaged. Uh, enjoy it while you can, buddy. <laughs> Gus Hansen in more trouble. Yeah, he lost two-thirds of his chip stack in that hand. So we've seen two big names, Huck Seed, and now Gus Hansen takes severe blows to their main event chances. Welcome back to the main event in the Rio, where the party atmosphere that once filled this room has been replaced by a very serious tenor. Let's catch up with Italian wunderkind Dario Minieri, once the chip leader. He has a spade flush draw. Reagan Silver leads with a set of trays, puts out a bet of 250,000. The masked man in the scarf in trouble. All in. Call. And all, all in, in and a call. call just like that. Minieri at risk. He has a draw. The blinds are 10 and 20,000. He put in a million chips on a flush draw? Reagan Silver with a great chance to pick up a lot of chips. Dyer needs a spade that does not pair the board or he's out of here. It is a diamond and he is out of here. I'm gonna miss the kid. Dubbed the Harry Potter this year, but he could not find any magic to save his tournament. I think Scotty just offered him a job around the house. <laughs> so Silver knocks off Minieri. 
Back to Italy now for Dario. Get your driver's license. Put that Porsche through its paces. Elsewhere, Kelly Joe McLaughlin with a heart draw is all in against Sinovio Ramirez III. What a ten of hearts. Oh, great. Another guy in a chair. Kelly Joe looking for a heart. No heart on the turn. Kelly Joe needs any heart but the ten, or her main event is over. And the river card is a six of clubs, yes. and Kelly oh. Joe McLaughlin is gone from this 2007 main event. A top 100 finish for Kelly Jo McLaughlin. She represented her California home game very well. So now just one woman left in the main event, Maria Ho. I know, yeah, so good luck, go all the way. <laughs> I had Maria Ho in the last woman's standing pool on day one. So Maria Ho will carry the mantle for the women in the main event from this point on, and don't believe for a second that she will back down. When I first started playing tournament poker, I was extremely intimidated by anybody because I was a female. When I come to the table with a lot of chips, they're thinking, I'm gonna get all those chips from that girl right there. I think they're just licking their chops when I get there, but I use that to my advantage all the time. My parents disapprove of me playing poker. I think they always expected me to kind of be a lawyer, be a doctor, have that kind of profession. I think they took it kind of hard, especially my mother. She was mad. She was like, you gamble for a living. Because she doesn't quite understand like the skill level that is involved in poker. Well, that's a really bad spot for this hand. I haven't told my parents anything yet about how far I've made. I don't even think they know I'm playing in the main event. I want to make them proud of me no matter what I do. I really want to go out there and do it for the women and do it for myself. Maria graduated from UC San Diego, started playing in Indian casinos in that area, and then refined her game at the Commerce Casino in LA, where she picked up pointers, watching one of the best big game cash players around, John Fan. At another table, Lee Watkinson has become a force in this main event, rolling over his table. Watkinson is now the chip leader with almost four and a half million. If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times, Lon, don't overlook Lee Watkinson. All right, and Kenny Tran wants the chip leader, no longer in the top 10, but he too is raking in a nice pot. Kenny Tran, another commerce casino forced to be reckoned with. Elsewhere, a former main event chip leader, Gus Hansen, looking to once again right his ship. Gus has that, where did most of my chips go look on his face? Yeah, last time we saw him, he lost a lot of chips. At his table is John Armbrust, a high school teacher, moving from Atlanta to L.A. right now. They lost his luggage, so he's wearing the same clothes every day at the main event. Well, he went to Duke University, Lon, so it's going to be tough for him to win me over. He raised it with pocket deuces. Hanson with pocket sixes. Gus didn't go to Duke, did he? Uh, no. Okay, I'm rooting for Gus. Gus raises it up to 222000 and Arm Bruce makes the call with pocket deuces. See, if Arm Bruce had gone to the University of Maryland, he'd know he was dominated. <laughs> All right, here we go. To the flop. Hansen with the advantage. The flop, 7-10-7, seven, seven, misses both. Gus still leads. Arm Bruce checks it. All right, Gus, let's blow this dookie right out of the hand. Let's do it, buddy. Check. I don't like that check. What's your boy doing? I would have bet 363,000. Ace on the turn. Gus still ahead. 200. Arm Bruce acts now 200,000. Who's he kidding? All right, Gus, let's put them all in. Heidi ho man. Heidi ho uh, yeah. You know what? I'm just going to fall. What the heck was that, Gus? Wow. And he shows him the deuces. And Gus gives up over 200,000. Wow. How did he fall 400 behind? Wow. Uh, that was a bad plan, my part. And then you bet the A's. That was just, wow. Our Bruce has Gus muttering. Wow. Sick call. <laughs> Norman, when Gus is running bad, he is a poster boy for dejection. Back now to our feature table. Umberto in a better mood than Gus. Last year in a field of 8,700, he finished 36. This year in a field of 6,300, he's going to finish in the top 100. And we welcome a new player to this table, Mark Ellerby, who owns a collection agency on the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam, Ace 10 of Clubs. And right away, Ellerby moves all in. Doesn't have that many chips, 127,000. Umberto should uh, recognize that motion he gave. Action now on Umberto. A relative pittance to Umberto, and he has a hand. Ace Queen. Putting on the shades. Oh, he's got to get 
Final say so from the shark. Call. Shark call. said call. <laughs> so LRB at risk. Still some other action behind Umberto though. Folds around to the big blind of Odd Khan. Ace six. Yet another ace. Oh. He folds it though. So just heads up LRB and Brennis with LRB all in. Who have the best hand? Umberto has the best hand. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is the queen. 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 No flop. No Come queen. On. But Umberto's still good. Ellerby is all in. Come on. And I don't blame him for standing queen. way back. <laughs> Turn card. Come no on. help to Ellerby. Heard the ball. You see the last card. Yoo-hoo. Ellerby has come table side to watch his fate. And unfortunately, Umberto's folly. He needs a 10 or he's gone. It is a 6. And Ellerby gone. He wins over $82,000. Good luck. Oh, jeez. You know, if you're Mark Ellerby, you survive 6,000 players. And when you're knocked out, this is your parting gift. Well, the fans sure get their money's worth when they come to watch Umberto. Yeah, it's free admission. <laughs> Back inside the Rio and the 2007 main event, under 100 players left. There's a bet that Scotty Wynn put out on the river, 450,000. Action now on Kevin Kim. I really think you have ace three spade. Or ace five spade. You limp it with a spade wheel. You can't beat the fine here, just you thinking. You got it. Take it. Kim will fold. Scotty shows his rags. Good night, baby. Good night, baby. <laughs> Sip it to daddy. Scotty is daddy. I got the nice six seven in spade, baby. Scotty's played pretty tight to get this far. Right there, he loosened the belt and bluffed home a pot. And that's got to get under Kim's skin. Scotty now over 2.7 million chips. Back now to our featured table where pretty much a camaraderie has been struck up between Umberto, his Sharks, and Havad Khan. Well, there's a conversation I don't want to hear. That must put people on tilt. The old shark and the A. Eh. It doesn't put me on tilt. I like it. I'm a fan of that. A party of one. Thank you. Watching the antics of Khan and Umberto put some players on tilt. For others, the trigger is different. But no matter what causes it, you have to face the fact that if you play the game, you're going to go on tilt. You too. And tilt in gambling parlance is when someone's been losing and all their lights start flashing. <laughs> Until all you do is make yourself look bad. Nice. Be playing King Eight, King Deuce, and Queen Deuce and stuff. Tilt is like having an out of body experience. You kind of feel your blood and your temperature rising. And your brain just um, melts. Who is this guy called Tilt? Give it to the player over there. Well played. He never introduces himself. I didn't kiss my you know what. It'd be a bit like uh, David Hasselhoff appearing at your kind of grandmother's like 95th birthday. You never expect him to appear, and yet there he is. How can you get away from Tilt? You can't and walk away from the table, take a break, go to the bathroom. Just suck out on somebody. Vindication, baby! Like instant off tilt. <laughs> it's over. You're just like, hey, whew. Feel better now. I say, don't get mad, get even. And Lon, you'll be the first to know when I get even. <laughs> Let's go, Umberto. Bring the heat. Ah, so Let's ready. do it. All right. We're ready. I am ready. I am ready, but not have a hand. Ah, I play when I have a hand. It's a different. Jack nine, no in, in my pocket. No. Jack Trey into the buck. Doug Martin now second in chips to Lee Watkinson. Still sitting on that big stack. 
Six deuce for David Tran. Tran, yet another pro who plays a lot at the Commerce Casino in L.A. Get a little frisky with six deuce with the Rays. We've mentioned before Havad sounds and looks reckless, but he plays a pretty tight, solid game. Now Havad Khan with ace, queen of clubs will make the call of 75,000. Action folds around to a new player here, Ryan Lawrence, another one of those pesky Canadian players. We can't get rid of him, Norman. 50 more? He's a road construction foreman. And from the big blind, he'll put the 51,000 more in. Remember, Tran has six deuce. He wasn't happy with one caller. With two callers, he should ask for his bet back. <laughs> Three players to the flop, and the flop is all jacks. Oh, Umberto folded a jack. <laughs> Lawrence checks, as does David Tran. Now Havad Khan reaching for chips. And he's going to bet 120000 I'd figure Havad for a pocket pair with that bet. He does have the best hand with an ace, but no pocket pair. Lawrence folded. Tran with six deuce. He's not going to call here. He'll either raise, fold, or, or fold slowly. David Tran does oh. fold to Havad Khan, even with three jacks on the board. Makes the bet and wins the hand. Yes! Khan! Khan! I play too much poker! Too much! This, re this reminds me of uh, a Discovery Channel special on the mating habits of Madagascan lemurs. <laughs> they didn't see me coming. Left field. Need your catchers, Mitt. Let's go. Boy, he does play a different game. All right, let's move away from here. Go to table two. Gus Hansen pushed all in with pocket aces pre-flop. Ryan Elson with a suited ace 10 would need to come up with almost 400,000 to make the call. How big is it? We're looking at a gloomy Gus. Elson's nephew told him the night before he left for Las Vegas to wear some Buckeye gear for good luck. It's been working. I call. Elson makes the call. This is our degree all-in moment. <coughs> Big-time pro Gus Hansen all-in, but leading with his pocket aces. Nice hand, Gus. Mm. Well, see. There's five cards. Right. Give me a straight. Give me some clubs. Come on. Come on. <laughs> All right. Out of the flop, it is 7-9 Trey. Aces are still best. So far, it can be too bad on the turn. That is a pretty looking flop for Gus. Turn card, another Ooh, one club. More club. Come on, come on, come on. One club. Gus said it couldn't be too bad on the turn, but he can now be knocked out of here with another club. River card, it's black, <laughs> but it's a spade. And the degree check mark to Gus Hansen. I'm telling you, Gus needs a shave, a shower, and a schwitz. Nice answer. Uh, so Elson doubles up Gus Hansen, who is now over a million chips again, but still with a lot of work to do. Live to breathe another day, I guess. The degree all in moment is brought to you by Degree Men. More power than you need. One day you'll need it. The World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. At this stage of the main event, every action is magnified. Every chip you commit could lead to your elimination, and the ever-shrinking field has been whittled down to under 90 players now. Nice playing with you guys. So here at the Rio, the 2007 main event is being led by Lee Watkinson, but just barely Dog Martin Mickelson in second place. And look at Scotty win in eighth place, and the top ten being rounded out by Philip Hill. What a story Scotty is carving out here. The last two-time champion of the main event was Johnny Chan in 1988. Scotty is putting himself in a position to start thinking of a second title. And Scotty put out a big bet pre-flop action on Stig Tap Rasmussen, who folds it, and Scotty will take the pot. Is he bluffing again? <laughs> Shows the deuce. Nothing, but I can't do it with that hand, man. You know, I'm swear. I look at the dudes that are with an ace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the main event, Stig. <laughs> Boy, Scotty takes his glasses off. I don't recognize him. <laughs> Damn glasses. No. <laughs> All right, Scotty went having fun and being successful. But don't try that at home, baby. Don't try what I do at home, baby. There is nothing that Scotty does anywhere that anyone should try at home. The only other former main event champion left in the field right there, Huck Seed, facing a large re-raise from Bill Edler. Huck, one of the legendary prop bettors out there. He once bet he could go an entire year without shaving. He lost that one. Deuce three is hard to beat at this point. 
And he once bet he could stand in ocean water up to his shoulders for 18 hours. He lost that one, too. Good play, sir. Huck thinks Edler's made his straight and gives away aces up. I really don't know how I'm still in this tournament as badly as I've played to this point. I have a feeling that if I don't start playing better, it's going to be over for me very soon. Tough self-assessment. Huck can play with the best of them. So a difficult day for the four-time bracelet winner who was under a million chips now. As we get back to our featured table, two-time bracelet winner Umberto Brennis has a chip stack a little under average, about 1.1 million and pocket tens. Umberto loves to say he plays poker because he's bad at soccer. He's good at poker. <laughs> he's going to make a raise to 80,000. Doug Martin sitting on the sidelines again. David Tran now. 5-4 off suit. Crazy. He's just, Blazer. He's just oh. raised. David Tran with a lot of pep in his step right now. Umberto now with his radar up. 240. And David Tran makes it 240,000 more to play. When Umberto raises from early position, he's usually holding good cards, as I mentioned earlier. And indeed, he's got pocket tens. Yet Tran has come over the top of him with 5-4 off from the cutoff position. So now action back to Umberto. Now, Brennis knows that Tran knows that Brennis is pretty tight, so Umberto has to be thinking, does he have a monster down there? It was a huge raise from Tran. And, of course, Umberto's got to be worried that Tran has him covered, too. My God. Ah, the Shark's talking to him now. What does he say this time? You sure? <laughs> oh, is he giving it up? Ah, the unbluffable man gets bluffed again. David Tran takes down the pot with Moxie. Good fun. You sure? Good lay down, Humberto. You sure? I think TV. Not sure. Tran plays position, Tran plays big stack, and Tran plays Humberto. Brennis was had yet again, and the shark has to go without its feeding. <laughs> The 2007 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Your best bet for great taste. Miller Brewing Company and in part by E-Trade. It's easy. It's extraordinary. It's E-Trade. And the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino, home of the 2007 World Series of Poker. Welcome back to the Rio. We pick up Scotty Wynn at the outer tables. Once again, he has raised enough to put Willie Tan all in. Really won a bracelet in 2005. He'll fold his hand. You know, baby, I would go all in with you, no matter what, how, how you do it. Tan sees win, had just a flush draw. I guarantee you, Tan had the better hand. Scotty putting on a clinic. And Scotty now over 3 million chips. Back to Gus Hansen at table two on the roller coaster today with only about 400,000. Pushed all in pre flop of pocket sixes against Tuan Lam's ace jack. Lamb was born in Vietnam, now lives in Canada. Lamb would need over 300,000 to call. And he will give up the cards, and Gus Hansen will take that pot after the all-in re-raise. Gus Hansen, once the chip leader of this main event, has been hanging on of late, and he'll hang on to about a half a million chips right here. All right, back now to our featured table with Umberto. I'm not sure he can trust those sharks anymore. He's been had a couple of times. Maybe they're tanking on him. <laughs> Umberto and Havad Khan have bonded somewhat, connected by their shenanigans. <laughs> Action on Umberto with ace, king of hearts. Umberto is tied for the record for most caches in a single World Series with eight with Phil Helmuth and Michael Binger. He did it last year. He says raise it up. And Umberto with a suited ace king makes it 85,000 to play now. Mickelson again mucks his cards. And action folded around to the big blind, Havad Khan, with two aces. Oh, monkey see, monkey do. Thumbs up from Havad. And this could be trouble for Umberto. Here comes the re-raise. All in. I call, I call. What a bad break for Umberto. Uh. He got him. Havad landed the shark. Wow. And you know, whatever happens in this hand, we have to advise yeah. viewers to turn the sound down a little. Come on, Charles! <laughs> Come on, Charles! Come on, baby! Do? You played too many hands. Why do I believe you, you two aces? 
My God. Boys, Come on, baby. Up. Come on, let's do it. Humberto on the verge of being eliminated. Okay. Avad Khan with the pocket aces against Humberto Brennan's ace cubs, king. Cubs, cubs, the flop. Cubs. Trey five king. Humberto got a king, but he's still a long shot. Spade me, baby. Avad with aces and a flush draw. Who is the king? Come on, baby. Let's do it. Do it for basketball. Do it for Captain America. Do it for me, baby. Come on. Let's do it Come for on. basketball and Captain America and Havad. <laughs> it's a turn. It's a four. A straight draw for both. Bones. King of those. Come on. King. Come on. With a non-spade deuce, they would split the pot king. with a straight. Otherwise, Umberto needs a king or he is wamboozled. The river card. King. Khan does it! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, baby! Yeah! Oh my God! The shark yeah, is extinct. Let's go, let's go, come on! Yeah, baby! Yeah. I knew it! I knew it! Thumbs up! He'd go for it! <laughs> this is unfortunate. <laughs> this would be more unfortunate. Did you have the shark? The Shark may be down, but other pros are on their way up, like Lee Watkinson, our current chip leader, who's been quietly building his stack, as are Kirk Morrison and Kenny Tran. Scotty Wynn's been winning, too, though not so quietly. If it's to daddy. Gus Hansen and Huck Seed are struggling, but still alive. And Maria Ho's hanging in there for the ladies. Ten tables left, 82 players with one dream, winning poker's biggest prize. Yeah! For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarron. We'll see you next time from the World Series of Poker.